Hi everyone, my name is Adam and I'm the owner of Alto Hearing. We are an independent family-run audiology practice in the UK with clinics in Lutterworth, Leicestershire and Kenilworth in Warwickshire. Thanks for joining me today for another earwax removal procedure. If you do like this content, then do give the video a like and subscribe for more earwax removal videos. So this person was just in for an earwax removal procedure, feeling blocked up in the ear, causing hearing loss. And you can see it is fairly full of earwax. And at the start, this just looks like it's going to be a fairly routine one. The earwax seems to be coming out nicely. It looks nice and soft. And we're able to take the first bit out nice and easily. It's only when we go back in for the second time that things start to become a little more concerning. You can see at the bottom of the ear canal, rather than earwax, we can see a substance that's a bit more white. And the longer we go into this video, you'll see it's pretty clear from the footage we're looking at a canal cholesteatoma. You'll see a little filiform wart here in the ear. Um, that's nothing to worry about. It's a bit unusual looking. You see these types of wart normally on the neck or the face, sometimes on people's eyelids, um, but you do see them occasionally pop up in people's ears too. Unless it's causing a lot of irritation, which in this case, it wasn't at all. We'd normally leave these alone. If it was causing problems, then we'd refer onwards for the GP to have a look at it. So. Canal cholesteatomas. You might have heard of them before. Let's talk a little bit about cholesteatomas first. So a cholesteatoma is normally found on the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. It all tends to start with a retraction pocket. So a retraction pocket is essentially a small area of the eardrum that gets pulled back into the middle ear space. Now, that can be due to negative pressure from issues like eustachian tube dysfunction, but over time, the skin cells and the debris can start to accumulate in this pocket, and that's where things start to become problematic. This buildup can lead to the formation of a cholesteatoma. Now, cholesteatomas aren't tumours. They're actually made up of dead skin cells, but despite being non-cancerous, they can be quite destructive if you leave them untreated and they can grow and cause damage to the delicate structures of the middle ear, including the ossicles, which are the bones responsible for hearing. In some serious cases, uh, a cholesteatoma can even spread into the inner ear and in rare cases uh, affect the brain. As I say, typically when people talk about cholesteatomas, they're referring to those that form in the middle ear, but there are rarer cases where a cholesteatoma can develop in the ear canal itself. So why does this form in the ear canal? Well, Unlike middle ear cholesteatomas, canal cholesteatomas tend to form due to long-term irritation or trauma of the skin in the ear canal. Now that can be caused by things like repeated ear infections, chronic inflammation, or even injury from things like using cotton swabs or things like that. Over time, this irritation can lead to a buildup of dead skin cells, which may then become trapped in the ear. Now, as with other cholesteatomas, these trapped cells can grow, leading to erosion of the surrounding tissue. There are other things that can happen as well. If you watch Connor, you'll see he had a canal cholesteatoma last year, and the working theory was that it started to develop from a lack of blood supply to the bone in the ear canal as a result of diabetes. So while it is less common than middle ear cholesteatoma, the process is very similar. The skin debris accumulates, and if that's not removed, it continues to grow and cause that damage to the structures around it. It might sound strange, even though the dead skin itself isn't uh, aggressive like a tumour, it can still cause pretty significant damage. The problem comes from the fact that as the skin cells accumulate, they form a growing mass, and that mass produces enzymes that can erode the structures of the ear, such as the bone. The ear canal, being a relatively small and confined space, doesn't have the ability to naturally clear out this buildup, so the trapped cells and debris continue to grow unchecked. And that's what we're seeing with this person here. You can see a sort of shelf-like structure has been created in the ear canal. It's almost got two portions to it, lower and upper, and this has been created by that growing mass of dead skin. This person isn't in any pain at all, by the way. At some points, you can see a little bit of bleeding. We're constantly checking in with them all the time. And also, this person was watching the procedure themselves on a big screen right in front of them. 
we don't see these very often. They are incredibly rare. But when we do, we will be referring straight to the GP or going privately, we will ask one of the ENT consultants we work with to take a closer look at this. The treatment for canal cholesteatoma generally involves surgical removal because cholesteatomas don't resolve on their own and can continue to grow and cause damage. They usually need to be removed to prevent further complications. Now this surgery is typically performed by an ENT surgeon and the approach um, will depend on the size and location of the cholesteatoma. For smaller canal cholesteatomas, the procedure can sometimes be relatively straightforward where the debris is carefully removed and then the ear canal is cleaned. In some cases, the surrounding damaged tissue may need to be repaired. Now, if the cholesteatoma has grown larger or if it has caused significant damage to the ear canal or surrounding structures, the surgery might be more complex. In more severe cases, the ENT may need to perform reconstructive surgery to repair any bone or uh, tissue that have been eroded away. After surgery, follow-up care is extremely important with these. The ear canal will need to be regularly monitored to ensure the cholesteatoma doesn't recur, as these can sometimes grow back if all the debris isn't completely removed. Regular checkups and careful cleaning of the ear can help prevent this from happening again. So once Andrew had cleared the wax out of the ear canal, this person has now been referred onwards and will be checking in soon to see how they're getting on. But this wasn't the first cholesteatoma we've seen recently. We also had a lovely lady come in who was 96 years old. Again, she came in for a pretty standard earwax removal appointment. And as you'll see in the second video here, it's something quite similar to what we've seen in the previous video. Now, we talk in the UK about the benefits of professional earwax removal as earwax removal itself is deregulated, which means anyone technically can provide the service. And we see it regularly with random businesses setting up in hairdressers and all sorts. Now, this right here is an excellent example of why earwax removal is something that should be done by people with the necessary training, experience and structure in place to be able to help you. The danger is missing something that is potentially very dangerous. Now, with this one, Andrew found this and it clearly has the appearance of a potential canal cholesteatoma. So he cleared it away a bit and then sent this lady to her GP for um, an urgent referral. In fact, Andrew hand delivered this himself to her GP to ensure it got there quickly given this lady is 96. Nine days went by and the person didn't get a call back. So then the patient called and they did a home visit and said it was just earwax. Now, these are so rare, so it may be they'd just not seen something like this before. So this lady came back into us and Andrew removed a bit more, but at this point she was in pain, which she wasn't the first time, and her hearing was declining and the hearing aid she used didn't seem to be working so well. So actually Andrew caught up with Connor at Durham, who trained Andrew in wax removal, um, who confirmed Andrew's initial suspicion that it had the appearance of necrotizing a titus externa. So at this point, Andrew got in touch with a member of this person's family after gaining consent and asked them to really push this with her GP. In the meantime, we had one of the ENT consultants who we work with privately prepared to take this on if the person didn't get anywhere. Anyway, luckily, uh, an urgent NHS ENT referral did come through as a result of pushing this, albeit three weeks after when we wanted. And lo and behold, they wanted to keep her in for six weeks on an intense treatment of IV antibiotics. Now, she actually refused this. And instead, um, they sent her home with tablets and drops and she had to go in for weekly check-ins for six weeks. The good news is this person came back in after being discharged recently and she said she was hearing well again, no pain anymore, and was delighted to have been given the all clear. She was so grateful. Um, a real good news story. But you can't help thinking if Andrew hadn't spotted this in the first place and then had the tenacity to keep pushing this through until she was seen in hospital, it might have ended up very differently. At 96 years old and the severe complications that can arise from untreated cholesteatoma, you just never know.
we're really proud of Andrew and he embodies everything that we're about here, which is giving people our very best and going above and beyond to support people in our care. He did really well spotting this one. And I know the lady and her family are very grateful too. So that's it for today. Please subscribe to the channel if you like this content. See you soon.